Okay, Assalamualaikum everyone. Today we are going to look at this topic which is short message. We are going to learn based on the module made by Akram JP and Terengganu. So, let's start the class now. Okay, beforehand, let's look at the notes. For part 1, short message, what are the tasks in part 1? So, A... You will be given an email as a form of question for you to reply. Second, they will give you an email template where you will be able to write the answer. And C, the email should be about 80 words. D, it requires a personal and concrete response on general, social and everyday matters. For example, they might ask you about things that you would like to buy, things that you would like to suggest for them any kind of birthday present that you think suit uh, someone okay anything uh, that is related to personal stuff and you have to give a concrete response to that and then last one you must complete writing it that means uh, from the start to the end from saying hi from saying the greetings up until the last part where you sign off you must make sure that you complete writing the short message Next, an example of the question. Let's look at the question here. Number one, you receive an email from your new friend, Amy, who has just moved to your hometown. So, Amy said, hi, the school holiday is finally here. Let's go for a picnic with our friends. Where shall we go and what can we do there? What should we bring? I'll be waiting for your reply. Bye. Now, write an email to your friend in about 80 words. Write your answer below. So, from here, from this question, you can actually see there are three things. Three things that Amy actually asks you to answer. The first one is, where shall we go? Second, what can we do there? And last one, what should we bring? So, FYI, this is the common, the common way for you to, uh, the common question that you will get. Okay, they usually will ask you three questions in that one simple email. In that one short message, they will ask you to answer three questions. Okay, so now let's analyze the question. You receive an email from your new friend, Amy, who has just moved to your hometown. So the, set, the setting for that would be the first one, Amy just moved to your town. And number two, the school holidays have started. So when you know what is the setting, a scene is set where Amy just moved to your town and the school holidays have started. So now when you know what is the setting, you are able to imagine as if Amy is really your friend and then she has just moved to your hometown. So maybe when you want to answer later, you can think about that kind of situation. If she is new to your hometown, perhaps you would like to introduce her to certain uh, famous place in your place for example or maybe um, any favorite place that you have in your hometown and number two the school holidays have started so you don't have to worry about uh, any school work you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about any tuition class for example right and then therefore in your email what you have to do is make sure that the name amy should be the receiver Number two, the ideas of school holidays should be highlighted or mentioned. That means you have to mention that you are having school holidays right now. So you will, you will be very glad, for example, you will be very glad to join Amy's, um, Amy's plan. Okay, so now let's continue. And B, task includes certain points. Okay, put into questions which you must answer. So these these are the things that I mentioned just now. Number one, where shall we go? What we can, what can we do there? And what should we bring? So remember, in any kind of email that you will get in the question later, usually there will be three questions like this one. Okay, although it is very simple, only two lines here. Okay, the school holiday is finally here. Let's go for a picnic with our friends. Where shall we go? And what can we do there? What should we bring? But in that short two lines, there are three questions actually. Number one, where shall we go? So you have to mention the place. Where shall you and Amy go together? 
okay to have picnic together with your friends uh, number two what can we do there what are the activities that you can do while having the picnic together number three what should we bring okay what are the things that you should bring during the picnic okay failure to address any one of the questions means a task is not fulfilled which affects the content mark so this is what i always um remind or mention to you you have to remember you have to answer all the three questions given if you are not able to answer even at least one even one question if you can't answer it then that means you can't get full mark for your content okay another one another part is um set it set in an informal closing so for example you can see uh, so like this one in Amy's message, okay, she stated I'll be waiting for your reply. Bye. So later when you write your own message, okay, you can uh, give the same kind of uh, closing or choose any other informal closing. Okay, like in this one, it is set in an informal closing to show that it is an informal exchange between friends. The email reply or your answer should also be informal and friendly. That means you have to remember Amy is your friend, your new neighbor. She just moved to your hometown. So that means when you answer the uh, the email, make sure that it is informal, not too, not too formal as in as if you are talking to your principal or your teacher. Okay, make sure that it is informal because she is your friend. Okay, the assessment criteria. So we have discussed about this one before okay so what you have to do is make sure when you look at the content you have to make sure uh, they are uh, relevant to the task and then the reader is fully informed of the ideas described make sure you answer all the three questions given just now okay for communicative achievement don't worry much because this is for the first part the first part short message what you have to do is you have to make sure you communicate straightforward ideas okay using the correct tone and informal register so make sure as long as you are able to convey the message make sure that amy gets the answers that she wants uh, all the questions that she asked just now if you are able to answer all the questions that she wants then you are you can get five for this part right and then for organization, we have learned this one last week. Make sure you use simple connectors. Make sure you use limited number of cohesive devices. Okay, but if you use a variety number of cohesive devices, there won't be any problem for that. Okay, but make sure you do. Please use simple connectors uh, and cohesive devices. And then for language, uh, as usual, you have to make sure you use basic vocabulary appropriately. You use grammatical forms in good degree of control, and make sure that even if you do, uh, if you make errors, okay, you, uh, we can still understand what you are trying to say, right? Okay, let's continue. Simple answer. So this is the simple answer. Why? Actually, this is not the task that you have to do for today. The things that you have to do for today, I will post the question later. This is the simple answer for Amy's question just now. So look at the template here. You can see this is an email template. You can see to amygirl at bookface.com subject picnic. So later, you can follow this kind of style. Okay, very simple. So, hi Amy, I am so glad that you have brought this up as I had nothing planned for the holidays. I am totally excited and I know just the place for our picnic. It will be at Central Park just beside East Road. We can also play ball there as the park is huge. Don't forget to bring an extra mat to place our foots on just in case I lost mine. Don't worry about the supplies, I can handle them though you could bring some snacks if you would like to. The more the better. I would. I was also thinking that we could have Jack and David come. It will be more fun with them around. All right. Do update me if something comes up. Bye. So this is a simple answer. Okay, a simple answer that you can actually give to Amy to answer her questions just now. So let's look at the answer. Let's analyze the answer now. 
So here, look at the highlighted part here. It will be at Central Park, just beside East Road. So this is where you answer the first question, the place. Okay, the place. So just now, Amy asked you suggestion on uh, what kind of place um, you would like to have. Okay, um, would you like to go together? Okay, if you want to have a picnic together. Now, number two, uh, what can you do there? Okay, so you can say we could also play ball there as the park is huge. Can, and then the third question is asking you about what are the things that you should bring. So here it is stated, don't forget to bring an extra mat to place our foots on just in case I lost mine. So here, although it is quite simple, but you actually answer all the questions given. So when you do, when you answer like this, when you answer in the same manner you are able to get five for your content okay so now another thing is please a look at the the bold words here you can see here are the connectors the connectors the cohesive devices used so make sure remember remember the things that i have um told you last week remember cohesive devices are important especially in your essay Alright, so now let's look at the content. I will give you one minute to look at the con the uh, marking assessment here, okay, so that you are able to answer it better. Okay, so now let's look at each part here for content. Okay, all content relevant to the task. Why? Okay, let's look at the questions here. Where shall we go? Yes, you answered that part already. What can we do there? Yes, as well, you mentioned about playing ball together. And last one, what should we bring? Yes, you also mentioned that in the... Not you, but then the sample answer just now, okay? Uh, already mentioned what should we bring. So here, as you can see for the content, the reader is now fully informed about the planned picnic. So as long as the reader is fully informed, you can get five for the content. And then when we look at the communicative achievement, yes, okay, the, the message just now uses straightforward ideas and it is also consistent in terms of the friendly tone. Okay, they use informal register. And then for organization, yes, as you can see the bold words just now, they use cohesive devices appropriately. And then for the language, you can see they use basic vocabulary, which is uh, very relevant to the topic. You don't have to use like very high level words for this one because it is actually quite simple. She, uh, Amy just now, she asked you a very simple question. So you also have to answer in a very simple manner and then use simple grammatical forms with a good degree of control uh, and then mostly compound and complex sentences. Last one, simple error. So as long as that error doesn't impede meaning, that means we can still understand what you are trying to convey, you can still get five for your language. Okay, so for the sample answer just now, that person can actually get 20 for that answer. Okay, number seven, techniques to write. Okay, what are the techniques that you need to learn in order for you to write short message? Number one, make sure you have a friendly opening because this one is an informal message. So make sure it is friendly. For example, you can say, hi, hello, how are you? Okay, look at the examples that we have here in the, in the table here. Okay, but it is not advisable to use I hope you are in the pink or pink of health because this one is quite old. Um, but students often use this kind of phrase. Um, 
but uh, if possible try not to use them uh, try not to use it try to use like very simple friendly openings like hi hello how are you that's it okay no need to complicate things right number two look at the content what you have to make sure is when you write the content you have to look at the wh questions just now okay like for example in the in the question just now it is stated where to have the picnic together what to do there and what to bring so you have to know what are the questions what are the questions in the email that you need to answer this is one of the most important things that you have to remember once you get the question make sure you analyze the question make sure you understand what the questions uh, what the question asks you to do what are the questions that you need to answer in your reply later and then another one make sure you add some cohesive devices as well okay answer particularly to the questions asked do not divert the focus of questions that means when amy asks you about where to have picnic what to do there and what to bring do not talk about something else do not talk about joining a competition later once um, the school break is over don't talk about other things do not divert the focus of questions okay make sure you answer all the questions given and last one, friendly endings. For example, you can say bye, bye for now, see you soon, speak to you later, those things. And then another thing, it is not advisable to use other languages like adios, amigo, sayonara or annyeong. Okay? No matter how much you love other languages, but this is English. So do not try to use other languages, yeah? Okay, let's continue. Content elaboration. Use a simple WH questions brainstorming method. I am sure that you are very familiar with this kind of method. Why? Because you have learned this one since before, since you are very young. This is like the simplest way for you to write essay. Okay, number one. So for question number one, where to have picnic? Number one. You have to think about what place is suitable for picnic. When we talk about picnic, for sure, it has to be a very, you know, interesting place. You can't say, let's have the picnic in my house. That's not appropriate. That is not interesting much, okay? So, you can think about uh, having the picnic at the beach or park or a re near the river. And then number two, what is the location? Maybe it is uh, near the street, uh, the place, the place of the... Uh, the place for you to have the picnic, okay? Where is it? Maybe uh, at the street or you can think about the state and district as well. Okay, and then number three, how far is it? Is it near from your place? Is it far? You can talk about the distance as well. And the last one, what is the name of the fl uh, of the place? For example, here you can talk about Sekayu Pantai Batu Buruk Cerating. Okay, what is the name of the place? Like... Uh, you have to remember this one, our lesson for today, it is based on MIPSPM module um, by JPN Terengganu. So that's why the example here okay, is from Terengganu as well. Okay, let's continue. Forming ideas into sentences. So just now you brainstorm the idea by using the WH method. You think about where to have met, uh, where to have the picnic. So you use the WH method. But here, you are trying to form the ideas into sentences. For example, where to have picnic. So you have the specific place already, Batu Buruk Beach. Okay, what is the distance? Near to our houses. So when you form the ideas into sentences, you can see the example here. Let us go to Batu Buruk Beach for our picnic. It is not just near to our houses, but we can also invite Katie who lives two kilometers away question number two using cohesive devices in sentences where to have picnic so here you have to remember you have to use cohesive devices in your sentences so just now just now when we look at the first example there is no cohesive devices maybe simple connectors like but that's it but here here you can add more cohesive devices to make sure that your your paragraph is more organized okay for example here let us go to batu buruk beach for our picnic so you mentioned the specific place it is not just near to our houses but we can also invite katie who lives two kilometers away so here 
uh, the the use of connected C would be but. Okay, and then last one, moreover, we can just walk to have our picnic there. So here, you add up something. You add up moreover. So it makes the sentences that you have more organized. Okay, let's continue. Connectors in English, don't worry much about this one. You can use any kind of connectors that, um, make sure, make sure when you use connectors, make sure that it is suitable. It is suitable for your essay. For example, when you want to use moreover, okay, make sure it is um, um, in the right place, okay? Don't say despite this when you are supposed to use furthermore. Okay, don't use in conclusion when you are supposed to say uh, first or secondly. Okay, don't say to conclude when you want to talk about your opinion. Alright, so make sure that when you use connectors, make sure you use them correctly. Okay, uh, make sure that they serve the right purpose. Right, so here... You can also go to www.englishstudyhere.com to look at other examples of connectors or to understand the uh, connectors better. Yeah? Or you can also refer to the slides that we learned last week. Okay, We have learned about connectors last week. You may refer to that slide as well. Okay, so now we are going to look at the exercises. Alright, so question number one. FYI, there are two exercises that you have to do for today. So, question number one. You receive an email from your friend Ali who is from Selangor. So, Ali said, Hi, Mona. So, here, in this case, your character is Mona. Okay, remember, your character is Mona. So, in your answer later, don't say, Hi, Mona. You have to say, Hi, Ali. Because you are Mona. You are replying to Ali. So, hi Mona, I am going to Terengganu this weekend with my family. My parents really wanted to visit the beautiful beaches there. Where would be the best place to go? Where to stay? What family activities can we do there? Reply soon and take care. Now, write an email to your friend in about 80 words. Write your answer below. So, here it is stated that Ali, he wants to go to Terengganu this weekend with his family. So what are the questions here? Question number one, okay, Ali asks you where would be the best place to go? Question number two, where to stay? And question number three, what family activities can we do there? So here you have to remember the setting. Ali is going to Terengganu with his family, not with you. So you can't say that you are very happy to join him for a picnic and whatnot. You can't say that because Ali here in this setting, he is going to visit Terengganu with his family. He simply asks you for suggestions. Okay, He asks you where would be the best place to go, where to stay, what family activities can we can uh, Ali and his friends uh, and his family do that. Right, so make sure you understand the setting in order for you to answer the question. So here you may use the table below to draft your email. You see here, as you can see, friendly openings and then you have the content. You answer the three questions given. Uh, where is the best place, where to stay and what family activities to do. And last one, you put the friendly endings. Okay, so just now... That would be the first question. This is the second question. You receive an email from your sister, Maria, who is asking for your opinion. So, hi, Nisa. That means in this situation, in this setting, you are Nisa and your sister is Maria. So, Maria is asking for your opinion. Hi, Nisa. I need to know what reference book you are using for maths. I'm looking for a good one for your niece, Emma, as she is taking SPM this year. Where can I get the book and how much does it cost? Buy for now. So here, when we analyze the question, we can see there are still three questions given. The first one, I need to know what reference book you are using for maths. So that means you have to mention what reference book you are using for maths. 
Question number two, where can I get the book? So you have to mention, maybe you can talk about the nearest uh, bookstore or you can talk about uh, buying the books online. You can you can mention them okay, in, your, in the answer later. And then how much does it cost? You have to mention the price of that reference book. Right? There are three questions here. Make sure you have to understand the question. Make sure you understand the question. Make sure you analyze the question so that you know what are the things that you need to answer later in your reply. Alright? Okay, now uh, last one. Now write an email to your sister in about 80 words. Write your answer below. So this is the template that you have to follow. Yeah, You have to put two. And then subject. So just now, you have to reply to Ali. So you have to write Ali's email. For example, ali at gmail.com. And then the second exercise, we have to reply to your sister, Maria. So you have to say, Maria, lovely Maria at gmail.com, for example. And then you put the subject. For the first one, maybe you can talk about um, places to visit in Terengganu. Or uh, maybe any other subject that you have in your mind. And then for the second exercise, you can talk about reference book, for example. For subject, it is simply it is simply the title that you would like to have for your email. Or maybe the topic that you would like to talk about in your email. Okay? Alright, so this is the template. Last, uh, remember, you have to follow the... You have to follow the guidelines given. Okay? Please study the slide again. Please... um. If you need to repeat the video, then please do so. Make sure you understand everything. And then another thing is, make sure you submit me the two emails later. Yeah, the exercises here. Uh, you have to submit me the two email later. Um, make sure you write down the email in your exercise book. And then submit me the evidence of your work. Alright. Okay, so that's it actually. Um, I will give you another instruction in the description of my video, all right? As as well as the attendance link for today in the description of this video. So please um, study the slide given, study the video as well, and then if you have any question, please ask me personally. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you, everyone.